Good morning and welcome to the Internet of Manufacturing. My name is Doug Drinkwater, I'm the editor of Internet of Business. Delighted to be joined this morning by Ernst Stuckel Pickel. Talk us through Industry 4.0 and what the government has been doing to date. What is the government doing? I had today I had the ideas that I should say what's the government doing is as a whole for the digitization of the economy because it's a major political uh, point or item on the agenda of all of the politicians nowadays. And we have uh, launched a platform industry 4.0 which involves the uh, different stakeholders of society which have to work together to make digitization a success in Germany. To make industry 4.0, 4.0 happen that we, we have to, as politicians or as government, we have to set the right environment that it will happen. That means we need to have proper regulation. But what might be even more important, uh, that we support our industry, that they can really make the change to or the transformation to industry 4.0 happen, which is not so easy because uh, I think you know that Germany is very strong in industry, that we have a strong sector with SMEs, uh, that SMEs are working together with big companies. We don't see that them so much as competitors. It, um, it's a fantastic ecosystem. But um, if we want to keep the strength, we have to enable SMEs or small and medium uh, enterprises to really to do the change. Um, it's not our job to, to tell them exactly what each and every company should do, what their strategy should be, but we have to enable them to, to get the competence to decide on strategies and so on, that they really can take the right investment decision and that they are able to say, okay, we should change our strategy into the new digital age. Yeah? Because when you, you, you see Germany is very strong in the production, and the, and the B2B and the machinery and the plant engineering, uh, even in, in electrical engineering, it's very strong, but business mod models are changing. Platforms are coming in and they are threatening other companies to, from other sectors they are coming in these platforms. They are maybe taking away business from SMEs. So we have to make them aware and to prepare them. And one part is that the government sets up some subsidy schemes, but which something is what is much more important is that we have the right information. To, we will set up, for example, more than 10 competence centers where we, where uh, in particular SMEs can get information. We sensitize them. We give them practical information. Even we want to uh, to give them some test facilities because you have to test industry 4.0 resolutions, as we heard before in, in, in the conference, otherwise you don't know if it works or not. So we try to set up a comprehensive system. This uh, system is, um, but it's not the only efforts we take. We, we uh, spend a lot of government money in R&D schemes. Uh, we, we try to set up some information about how to use test beds, some guidelines to support them. But this would not be enough if only the government would do. We need uh, the support by all stakeholders and that's exactly the platform industry 4.0 we set up. And what's the ultimate goal then of this transformation? Uh, it, there's a lot of talk around smart factories and digitized factories. What's the ultimate goal? Is it to become much more efficient as a factory, to become much more productive? I think in Germany, at least in SMEs, uh, the, um, it, it's very often dusk, uh, discussed under the head of improving efficiency, uh, saving some resources, a more efficient resource planning and so on. I think it's much more because Internet of things or internet of manufacturing, however you name it, it means that you get the whole value chains uh, will uh, change, will change, yeah, we will we'll have connection between more companies, you will, um, the borders between, um, between the companies itself will blur, you will have the IT sector connected to manufacturing sector, so we have a, a whole huge ne network will be set up over the years to really change um, production dramatically and this does not only mean to improve efficiency, you have to be ready to communicate with other companies, you have to be ready to exchange data, you have to understand how future processes work, so you have to understand how you 
your relationship to your main clients have to be uh, shaped for the future yeah you have to to uh, to show, to strengthen the ties to your clients maybe you can find new clients if you are digitized but very sure is one thing if you don't uh, see what you have to digitize if you don't have a strategy then you endanger your own company that you simply be out one day yeah um, but I think the German companies are great because uh, they are the um, actually they uh, they are the uh, suppliers of the industries in the world so they are aware and they know the processes of manufacturing the world very closely they know it very clearly yeah? and I think they have to use uh, the opportunities they have now to combine this knowledge this deep knowledge with uh, digital technology so that they can really increase um, the um, um, not, um, increase the, the value for their customers yeah and through new services through different kind of products and so on and so on I think that's the main thing in the end I think nobody knows where in uh, industry 4.0 will end but I'm very sure that we have maybe in 10 years already or 15 years we will have an completely interconnected uh, value chains which are very intelligent with autonomous parts in it yeah which is very often machines will um, will um, communicate with people yeah and this autonomously so this change completely the system and you have to prepare for yourself for me it does not mean that you have immediately to to buy industry 4.0 solutions because it's somebody said uh, one day it's not a product, it's not a machine, it's, it's not automatization itself, it's a whole concept. And this concept is only to start and in some sectors it's already far advanced, like the automotive sectors and other sectors is only coming up. Yeah. You talked um, a bit about a concept and you talked earlier about SMEs perhaps not being as ready for this change. Um, why aren't they ready for the change and what are the dangers if they don't embrace this? Because I know you talked about you know, companies coming from other sectors yeah. and taking business. Yeah. One very important issue is that you, these companies need to be in a posi position that they have the competence to decide about possible strategies, yeah, to work them out and then to decide is it the right strategy for me. So you need a huge amount of knowledge and uh, yeah, capability simply to assess yeah, what's going on. Uh, we have to enable SMEs, not smaller SMEs have not the manpower to do so. Yeah? They, it's even difficult to, to get qualified people nowadays in Germany, even in, in particular for SMEs. Yeah? You have to set up new uh, departments in your company yeah? just to deal with that. This is uh, more or less a, um, an, a task which has the highest management level to fulfill. Yeah? They have really to show ownership. Yeah? And this takes some time because it's easier just to go slowly, just to improve a little bit your production processes, just digitize a bit, yeah. But to really to introduce a completely new business model, which might be necessary from case to case, it's it's a huge step, yeah. And that's why it's going slowly, and I can understand that fully. I don't want to criticize that at all, yeah. And what can they learn from the bigger companies? Because obviously the likes of GE, Siemens, you know, these huge gigantic companies all already well on the way with industry 4.0 yeah, yeah. what can they learn from those those giants in, in a sense of how they embrace industry 4.0 I think there are a lot of um, business relationships between them as I said before they're not necessarily competitors they are working closely together that makes the strength of the German industry but this is exactly why we set up the platform industry 4.0 and this platform we about 200, 250 uh, representatives of companies, academia, um, trade unions work together, yeah. And here we really take care that there is a right mix, yeah. So it's it's clear that uh, that the big companies, yeah, like we see here or tomorrow at the conference, yeah, they are have some how should I say they are driving the process in a certain way, yeah, but. Um, but together with the representatives of SMEs, uh, they can find, they can work together and to find out what problems do face SMEs are facing. How should we approach it? How can we develop guidelines? How can we create awareness? And because there are um, experts from from all kind of companies together, they really 
try to work out where we have to sensitize companies, yeah, where to get, the, get their knowledge, uh, where the knowledge can be improved. Yeah? And this platform really sets a focus on the manufacturing side. Yeah? Digitization is much more. We are always, always is talked about platforms, uh, about Amazon, uh, Google, but it, it's, we are here, um, how to say, we concentrate on industry without shutting down the whole process because in the end, all have to work together. Digitization means everything will be connected in the future, yeah. And talking of w uh, working together, I, I know Industry 4.0 has now established close ties with the Industrial Internet Consortium. Yeah. Can you talk us through a bit about that relationship and what that means going forward? Yeah, the idea is, um, once again, the platform itself, it's business driven or it's, it's stakeholder driven. Yeah, And when it comes to to cooperation, international cooperation, there's one idea behind. Yeah, You need to cooperate to have the right standards. You can cooperate to develop use cases. You can uh, cooperate to to use test beds. Yeah? This is a complicated approach, but it's very important and it's international. Yeah, There won't be Industry 4.0 only in Germany or only in the US or in, in the UK. Yeah? So it will be everywhere. So at least the big companies, they are already thinking extremely international. And that's why we have um, companies, German companies, which are members in both platforms, in IIC as well as in the platform industry 4.0. So it really grew out of the platform that we should collaborate, yeah? and it's in particular standardization, but not only, yeah? because open standards, interoperability is the main issue in the end for SMEs. Yeah? SMEs can only compete if they if their systems can be put into bigger systems there yeah, and they are interoperable. If they are closed standards or proprietary standards, then you have a problem because then you can't sell or it becomes very expensive for you because you have to, uh, f uh, to uh, how should I say, you have to, to uh, fit your, make your, your machine or equipment fit for many kinds of standards yeah, if you get them. Yeah. So that's a very important and I think uh, with this cooperation, IIC and Platform Industry 4.0, it was very clear that open standards are better and international standards are better than if you have closed standards. I think there is some change in, 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 in uh, the approach of even of big companies. Yeah? If you have a platform which is closed only for your own products in the end, you might be less competitive. I think it definitely it will be like this. Yeah? If you are open for other providers, then you really uh, create competition, but you can place your own products much better as well. And talking internationally, um, and I think you touched upon it earlier, um, as did Richard Soley, which was, you know, obviously a number of countries are developing their own schemes. I know the likes of China yeah. and, and obviously France, who I think um, there's been some recent discussions with the IIC. Um, how far are they behind um, Germany and, and what do they need to do to catch up? Uh, I think I should not judge how far other countries are. Definitely Germany is very well advanced. Yeah, Compared to China, I would say China's interest is more to come from mass production into more high quality production. Some people would say it's, it's still industry 3.0. It will be a mixture. Yeah? They have the in, in China's Equality Initiative 2025. That's why I'm very much interested in international cooperation. But anyhow, we are just in the process of setting up this cooperation. Uh, it has to be business orientated in the end, even if it's in, in China still more government driven or organized. Yeah, but we have to bring together companies. It has to be a win-win situation. We are working on that. But it's not only that. We have established a, a special working group with China on standardization for Industry 4.0 and, um, and we have set up re or the recently um, MOU in the field of research and development yeah, which was done by the Ministry of Research and Education. So I think we, we can benefit from each other. Yeah? China is a big market for German companies and China is interested in German technology. So it's, it's a win-win situation we want to make the best of. And so what do you see then finally as the future uh, of, of manufacturing in particular and, and how IoT or the Internet of Things plays an important part in the future of production plants? How do you see that uh, you know, the manufacturing plants of tomorrow looking? 
I think the future manufacturing plants are totally connected, as I said before. Yeah, we will have complete processes where the um, engineering of a new product, innovation, will be closely linked to the consumer and in between there's manufacturing. Manufacturing will be much more decentralized because you will be able to, to decide or even the product itself will be able to decide to which factory it might go to be, uh, to be processed the next step or where it's best. So everything will be interconnected. But it's a long way to go, I think. But it's, it's a fantasy. And um, when I started my job half a year ago, I really, oh my God, there's something coming up. And the good thing is that more and more people see that it's really a, uh, a change. Uh, some people, uh, Richard Sola before said it, is it transformation or is it a disruptive process for me? It's both, yeah? If you are too slow, then it will be a disruptive, disruptive process for you. Otherwise, it can be transformation. Yeah. And so really appreciate your time today. Um, enjoy the rest of the conference and uh, good luck. Thank you very much.